Somebody should rub it off. Won't really do the trick. Huh? In our polite society, discrimination comes in more subtle forms. Much more difficult to rub off. Your friend, nothing wrong with discrimination. I discriminate every day. Unfair discrimination, I mean. The behavior of the prejudiced person. Prejudiced person? And what's prejudice? Hardly speaking, it means prejudgment pre based on instance. Right. And for my part, there's nothing much wrong with some sorts of prejudice. There's something wrong with all sorts of prejudice. <laughs> Be realistic, friend. Prejudgment. Hey, can't possibly get all the facts. We make decisions on the best available information. I agree that prejudgment is sometimes useful, has its limitations, and allow room for error. Yeah, and I may be hit by lightning, but you don't. Look, it's a big and busy world. Prejudice helps cut the corners. No harm done. It is a shortcut, and shortcuts can be dangerous. Get down to cases. <laughs> When is this going to stop? Darling, you just have a silly prejudice against them. Indeed I have. I'm prejudiced against eggs, all eggs. And now you're generalizing. An egg, Marjorie, is an egg. They do have a certain uniformity. Now let's try once more, dear. Please. You never know. We are determined, aren't we? Very. Eggs are so good for you. They may be good for you, but for me they're poison. But protein, dear, you That's must... what my mother told me, and it made me sick. Maybe it was rotten. I tried them scrambled in college, and they made me sick. I tried an omelet on our honeymoon just for you, lover, and it made me sick. Okay? Not once more? Not for Marjorie? Never, not coddled, not deviled, not pickled, not for Marjorie, never, never another egg. Perfectly reasonable. Prejudging the egg because of past and discriminating against it. Quite so. But mind you, he does generalize about eggs. Well, as you said, they do have a certain uniformity. Yes, they do. And his generalization is based on adequate experience. He tried eggs, not once, but several times, and each time they made him sick. A discriminating man. Admirable. Very well. Now let's take a look next door. We're at a very discriminating man. A poached egg may come from a hen. But an egg Benedict Bearstow is the work of angels. An excellent hollandaise, I think, sir. Of that, I have no doubt. The coffee, sir, is the Colombian Excelso with chicory. The Medina Excelso, I think, would be precisely right. Precisely, sir. Very discriminating, if I might say so, sir. Very discriminating indeed. Ah, yes, a discriminating man, in one sense of the word. <laughs> Life's too short. Who can decide every issue on the basis of experience? Not many. Not even our friend. Observe. An exquisite experience, as ever. And this evening? This evening, sir? Tornado Bordelaise. And with the Tornado, uh, something a little new in the way of wines, this uh, Chateau Noir, perhaps? I think not, sir. You are acquainted with the brand? I have it on good authority, sir, that Chateau Noir is fit only for the four-legged animals. I bow to you, Bearstow. We'll leave this Chateau Noir 
as you say to the beasts. <coughs> His decision is based on second-hand information. Now he has formed a prejudice against all wines made by Chateau Noir. He will discriminate against them. But he has it on good authority. That butler of his knows his stuff. No, oh, I agree. The information is reliable, even though second-hand. And a man must trust his butler. So his prejudice is reasonable and acceptable? Hmm. But food and drink are one thing. Human relations are far more interesting and complex. Let's take a look at some people. Occupational therapy, ping pong, amnesia. making the scene next door. I mean, like, uh, who rented the pad? Some uh, hairy-chested cats, man. You know, uh, like athletes. Who the devil are those fellows next door? Real, honest-to-goodness beatniks. Repulsive. You said it. Man, all those muscles. Uh, repulsive. Squares, man. Squares. I've seen them. Beards full of fleas, full of dope and alcohol, too, I bet. Man, uh, do we do the good neighbor bit with these cats? Strictly antisocial, man. These cats are from Squaresville. I've never met them. Hope I can keep it that way. Roger. I don't feel we have too much in common. Lethargy, man. Sweet lethargy. Mm -hmm. They have a mutual prejudice against each other. They've never met, yet they make assumptions. Well, some of the assumptions may be unfair, but, but they've seen each other. You know the type. They don't have the same interests. Sure. They may even have some conflict of interest. Like, what are these cats building, man? wasting the time having tea parties with each other. They're just using their heads. Oh, to some extent they are. You can't know everybody. But you admit they're prejudging. They have a prejudice against each other. Check. And that's based on assumption, a generalization. Right. But they have reasonable grounds. Granted. But you have to admit room for possible error. Perhaps if they got to know each other, they might find some common interest. They may be restricting themselves, but they aren't really hurting the other guy. All right. Their prejudices may be unfortunate and restricting, but they are excusable and relatively harmless. Well, that's my kind of prejudice. Well, we've all got some kind of prejudice. Let's go below to the apartment of the landlord, Mr. Packer, and his son. I wish those muscle men would shut up. 
Now, son, they're just young fellows having a little workout, keeping in shape. Splendid boys, I'm sure. You never met them? No. But I noticed the other day they were wearing the old school tie. Half your old schoolmates are in jail. The boys of Hallowed Hall stick together. Right or wrong, thick or thin, we never forget the old school. Old school indeed. It is in favor of a group that is not based primarily on reason. It seems like more of an emotional thing. Right. Emotional. Irrational. Well, still, it's sort of nice of him to feel that way. A bit dangerous, but at least it's positive. However, it can work the other way. Street live a group of immigrants. They're poor, and they speak another language. Packer doesn't know them. They've never caused him harm. As a matter of fact, they're potentially good customers. But they're strange, uh, different. That should breed curiosity, but not hatred. Noisy, smelly little vipers. Maybe he's heard things about them. All of them? Well, uh... No. There's no reliable second-hand information here. Actually, he was told in school that they were industrious and artistic. But Packer is so filled with emotional prejudice that he lumps them all together in one wild overgeneralization and calls them all greasy onions. <laughs> It's senseless, and it shows itself in many little ways. For example, the next morning. Mr. Packer. Mr. Packer, my mother would like a saucepan. Right over there. Onions inside a place and you mess everything up. You're nothing but trouble. Now go on, get out of here. And stay out of here, you onions. Oh, Mr. Bairstow, what can I do for you? I'm looking for a double boiler, Mr. Packer. Well, now, Mr. Bairstow, uh, uh, perhaps over here. Just the thing. I do hope you didn't injure yourself. Uh, no, no, but I, I'm afraid I've made a terrible mess. Oh, not at all, not at all. I'll have everything shipshape in jig time. Oh, uh, did you get your double boiler? <laughs> well, I get your point. Reasonable in some areas, but full of blind, irrational prejudice when it comes to onions. But now, another aspect. This evening. But, 
dad if you'd only meet her. I don't have to meet her, sir. But her father's a doctor. Oh, a doctor. He probably makes potions out of toads and witches' hair. Oh, lay off. She's helped me with math and physics. She's really exceptional. Have you seen her mother? Have you? Fat and greasy, shawl on her head, rings in her ears. And this girl of yours will grow up to be the same. I just wanted to take her to a show. We had a date. Oh, well, it's too late now anyway. She may look all right now, son, but she's an onion. They're all alike. Her people and ours just don't mix. You stick to your own kind. Let her stick to her. Another quality of this evil type of prejudice. It's inflexible, rigid. The unreasonably prejudiced man will turn a deaf ear to any evidence that will prove him wrong. Mr. Packer, for example, will admit the odd exception, but nothing worth changing his generalization about. Packer's son has just been forced into unfair discrimination, perhaps for the first time. But he doesn't really seem to be prejudiced. Well, this time he's simply taking the easy way out. But if he stays close to Daddy, and it looks like he will, unfair discrimination will become a rule. Only two rules of the firm to remember, my boy. Don't take any wooden nickels, and never trust an onion. It grows into suppression of a minority. Doors are closed. The son will have to justify his unfair discrimination. He will do this by developing all kinds of prejudices against the onions. Not the prejudices which are reasonable not the prejudices which are excusable, but a prejudice based on emotion. A prejudice against a group whose common bond is an accident of birth. A prejudice which is based on wild overgeneralization. A prejudice which closes the mind to argument. Racial or religious prejudice would remain an unhealthy personal problem if kept to oneself. But prejudice becomes a social problem when it leads to unfair discrimination. But even the Packers don't go around doing that. There are degrees of discrimination, my friend. There's the joker. After about three days of this, who comes to the door but another onion? Just <laughs> off the boat. Yeah. She was really curious this time. And the onion head says, Excuse me, madam, I'm... There's the name caller. My, that's a nice young lad you have here, Mrs. Adams. So unlike that dirty, greasy onion trash. There is social discrimination. There is economic discrimination. Then may come violence. Tricky words. Mental shortcuts. Well, they may be useful, but dangerous. Innocent people sometimes get exterminated. That's the ultimate solution for certain discriminating gentlemen of our time.